Hi, and welcome to another episode of Web 101. So today we're going to continue talking about HTML elements. Uh, we've gone over a couple of these already, but there's an awful lot to go over. And so let's just jump right in. So the only elements that we've really looked at so far have been sort of like the core big picture elements, like uh, the HTML element itself, the head and body elements. Uh, we did look at the paragraph element as just sort of a singular content element to look at. But let's look at a bunch more of the sort of content elements today. So headings are one of the ones that are come to mind a lot and, and do get a fair amount of use. So there are six levels of headings, H1 through H6, uh, with H1 being the, the largest, sort of most outdented, and then H2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 being progressively more and more indented. Um, so if we had a uh, play, for example, the title of the play, maybe A Midsummer's Night's Dream, might be inside of an H1 element. Um, the particular acts and scenes might be inside of H2 or H3 elements. And then individual people speaking might be H4 or H5 elements. Uh, you can see here sort of the, the pedigree of uh, academia here in that uh, HTML was originally developed to display academic and scientific papers on the internet. And so there's a, a lot of stuff in these sort of elements that kind of harkens back to that. You know, One of the great things about headings is that it's very easy to turn this into an outline. So your H1s are your highest level um, elements in, in an outline, and you can sort of skip over the actual content of, an L of, of the element within the headings, but then if you find a H2 or an H3 inside of uh, a, a larger heading, then you can automatically figure out, ah, this is an, an indented section for the, the heading, the larger heading that we're inside of. Another type of element that we see an awful lot, um, especially today with, with styling things, are lists. Um, so HTML defines two types of lists, ordered lists and unordered lists. So you have an OL element tag for ordered lists and a UL element tag for unordered lists. Uh, the contents of the ordered lists, the list items themselves, both use the LI element. Uh, so you know, once again, opening tags have that less than symbol the lowercase letter l, i, and then a greater than symbol. That's our opening tag. Um, and just a reminder, I'm showing tags here and talking about them in lowercase just because that's what most people do and I particularly like. But the tags themselves are case insensitive. So you can have mixed case, you can have all uppercase uh, or all lowercase. So our, our lists, you know, within a ordered list, you might have uh, a couple uh, list I, or list items, uh, li elements with start and end tags, and the same for unordered lists. The big difference between them is what the browser or rendering engine does with the items. With an ordered list, it will figure out, hey, this one is one, two, three. If you've got you know a number of list item elements within an ordered list element. Uh, it's going to figure out these need to be numbered, one, two, three, four, five. You can change the starting number. So if you've got you know, a big break between ordered lists, you can have one through five in some place and then six on someplace else. Uh, ordered lists also respect multiple indentations. So you can have another ordered list inside of an ordered list. So essentially one of the sub-elements of an ordered list can be another ordered list. And browsers are smart enough to say, ah, these are indented even more. And so it's going to indent them some more and probably switch over to like A's and B's and C's or Roman numerals or something like that to denote different levels of nestings. Again, you can see sort of the hearkening back to academic papers where you had uh, you know, outlines and those types of things that you wanted to display. Um, one of the things that we talked about in a previous episode was that not all elements require a closing tag and list items are one of those. So you can have an opening tag for a list item and you don't necessarily have to close it. 
Um, there may be situations where you really want to close it in order to, to force the rendering engine to behave the way you want. But if you've got a very basic uh, list, you don't have to close it. The rendering engines are smart enough to know, and the specification says, hey, if you encounter another list item opening tag, then implicitly close the previous list item tag that you, that you had opened. Another section of HTML tags and elements that uh, get a lot of use are tables. So again, you know, academia loves talking about data tables. And so the being able to display tabular data was really big, even in the, the earliest days of the web. So a table just allows you to specify rows and columns of data that will line up together and uh, allow you to see, hey, here's a heading. And I can sort of read down the list of what the items are in that particular head heading and read across to see that uh, all of the items in this row sort of belong together and relate to the column headers. So you've got a couple different types of uh, tag names here. So there's a table element to begin with. Uh, so you know we've got our open or less than symbol, table, and then a greater than symbol, and that's our opening table tag. And then you've got a couple different sections inside there. HTML tables are what I would consider row-centric in that you define table rows. There's nothing really that defines a column. Um, and so the first element within a table is a opening table row tag. So we've got a table row. And then within the table row, you can have either table data elements or table header elements. And as you might imagine, table header elements are usually in the first row and they correspond to what the contents of the column are going to be. And so if I've got a table row element with two table header elements, then I'm sort of implicitly defining that my table is going to have two columns. If I were to add more table header elements to my first table row, that would effectively add more columns to my table. And then every subsequent table row element that contains just table data elements um, would contain a single row's worth of data with each table data element corresponding to the table header element in that first row. So the order sort of matters here. Um, and uh, you know you could have a, an example table of uh, all of the various Jedi and what colored lightsabers they had, for example. There are a couple other elements that are not really terribly specific, but they're sort of generic. Uh, in their nature, um, and some of those, or two of those that we'll see an awful lot of in web development are the div and span elements. Um, and the div element is a generic block level element. It takes up all of the avail available horizontal space within the container that it's uh, a child member of. Uh, a span element is a generic inline element, and it takes up only as much horizontal space as its content dictates. Um, this is one of those things that's kind of hard to wrap your head around without talking about a very specific example. Um, and so, for example, a, a div might be used to denote a large block of text, um, maybe a paragraph or an article or a, an abstract. Um, and that would block out the, uh, it, it would basically put a line break above and below the contents of, of this element. Whereas a span uh, doesn't break the flow. So if you've got a whole bunch of text and then you open a span element, the contents of the span don't break flow. So you don't have a new line um, before and after the span. Um, and so you know the, the span sort of is used for places where you want to maybe highlight something or just call out a section of content and style it differently or somehow identify it as, as different than the rest of, of the contents of the div. Um, so a paragraph element is a really great example of a concrete implementation of a block element, whereas a div just sort of doesn't have any default styling. It's just a, it's just a block of content with, within the larger scope of, of your page. One of the things that's a little bit um, 
not not so great about divs and spans is you don't really know what the content of these things are and you don't know what it's going to look like uh, unless you've got some styling on it it's hard to, to to figure out what the document structure is with just divs and spans um, we'll talk a lot about css in some later uh, lessons but you know, just to, to show to begin with, um, if you had classes attached to divs and spans, uh, it might be a little bit more uh, discernible what these contents are. So, for example, you could have a, a, a larger block div that says, hey, this is a blog post. And then maybe within that div, you would have two other divs that describe the content of the post and maybe a picture that goes along with that post. And then within the content div, maybe you have all of the text of your blog post with some spans surrounding particular areas of text that you want to call out for some reason. And so the combination of divs with some classes lends a little bit more intelligible structure to an HTML document. And this was kind of how we did things for many, many years. Um, and one of the design goals when HTML5 sort of kicked off in the late 2000s, so 2007, 2008, was this idea of let's just have some more generic tags that can more accurately describe the content of documents without having to resort to styling and without having to just have hundreds and hundreds of divs in your, uh, in your document. So HTML5 placed a new emphasis on semantics um, with the attempt of, of saying that the meaning of a document should be understandable from the DOM and not needing the visual styles. So the, some of the semantic tags that were introduced with HTML5 were uh, elements and tags like article um, and header, uh, figure, figure captions. So these are all elements that were introduced with HTML5 to better describe a, a document. So in our previous example of a blog post, rather than having a, a whole bunch of divs, we could say, hey, the top level element is now going to be an article. And within the article, we might have two elements, a header, um, maybe, um, maybe there is still a div for the actual contents of the thing. Uh, and then instead of just having a generic div for our picture, we could have a figure. There's a figure element that is, is used there. It's still, again, sort of hearkening back to the, the academic roots of HTML5. Academics love their figures. And then within the header, you might still need to emphasize something. And so there is a, a particularly old tag, the em element, um, and that says, hey, I'd like to emphasize this particular uh, section. Um, EM tags are typically denoted within a browser as ha having the text italicized. Similarly, instead of having a div describe our uh, picture, we could have a figure element. And the figure element might contain an image element and a figure caption to go along with that image. Um, so article tags uh, could be used uh, to sort of talk about the entirety of a post or magazines. Um, headers represent uh, heading information for um, uh, an article. You can also have footers. Um, and then figures are a great way to sort of encapsulate all of the various pieces that might be involved with displaying a picture with a caption and allowing for very targeted styling for how those are going to be displayed and rendered on a page. So sort of flipping back uh, into the past again, um, there's another tag out there called the pre tag. Um, so this is just uh, you know, less than symbol, P-R-E, greater than symbol, um, and it stands for preformatted text. Uh, and the idea here is basically, hey, you want to represent code, for example, or something where the white space is important. Um, remember, HTML by default takes any white space in your HTML code and basically strips it down and replaces it with one single space. So you can have, you know, an opening tag and then a whole bunch of 
actual spaces, uh, a whole bunch of carriage returns or line feeds, line breaks, and then you start your text. And that's all going to be reduced in the rendering engine to just a single space, um, which is great when you, what you're talking about and wanting to display is you know blocks of text. Uh, but for example, in something where the spacing is important, for example, uh, Python code, spacing is incredibly important. And so if I wanted to show some Python code on a web page, I would want to make sure that I wasn't just getting all of the white space um, stripped out and replaced with single spaces. So I want all of that spacing. It also allows for good old-fashioned ASCII art. So you can have you know text all spaced out and lined up just so so that it shows a picture. Um, you know this has sort of made its its return on social media these days. But uh, you know back in the day you wanted to you know put some artwork on your web page. There was a time when you couldn't put images on web pages and, and you would draw these little diagrams with uh, just characters that you could type on your keyboard and get them all lined up nice and nice and neat. Uh, and so the, the pre-tag is still pretty useful today for displaying um, any time where, where the, the, the line spacing and the, the text spacing is important. Uh, block quote is another sort of oldish uh, element. Again, you know, hearkening back to our academia roots. Um, so a block quote is just rendered basically as a block element with some indentation on either side to show that, hey, this is you know, something set aside from the rest of our content. So maybe I've got some blocks of text in paragraphs um, above and below, and then I want to you know, cite some text that somebody else wrote. I could put that inside of a block quote element. I mentioned the EM tag earlier. There's also a strong tag. Um, so you could have your uh, less than symbol, S-T-R-O-N-G, greater than symbol. That's our opening tag for a strong element. Strong elements are usually rendered in bold text. Um, and emphasis elements or EM elements are typically rendered in italicized text. Um, however, one of the, the great things about this is these are semantic tags. And so it just tries to impart meaning to things. So for example, if you had a screen reader, the screen reader can't really read bold or read italicized, but it can change the um, sort of the speed of the text reading and maybe the volume of the text. So instead of something being uh, read in a monotone voice, maybe a particular section is louder or a particular section is emphasized in some way. And so the, you know, re remember that not everything that sort of interprets HTML is going to be a visual web browser. You could have auditory things. You could have um, other types of parsers that are looking for meaning in these elements. So the pre and block quote and M and strong tags are all pretty old elements. They were defined originally in HTML 1.0. Um, and if you think about it, these are not pure structure elements there's some element to styling that goes along with those tags. Um, Preformatted text says, I'm gonna use a mono-spaced font and I'm going to render all of the spacing as, as is in, in my, my text. Block quote says, I'm gonna have some padding or some margins on both sides of my, uh, this block of text. The header one through header six elements are similarly rendered usually with larger font sizes or bold font faces. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of other sort of tags out there that have some level of styling sort of baked into them. Um, so let's go ahead and play with our web page a little bit more and uh, see what some of these elements look like. So if I pull up our index.html page from a couple episodes ago, we've got you know, just a hello world and a body element. And inside of our body element, we had some paragraph tags that said um, a long time ago. Let's go ahead and change our paragraph from, or our long time ago from a paragraph element to a, uh, a heading element. And we'll switch this out to heading one. Um, and so you can do that by just re replacing the P 
inside of the opening and closing tags with H1. And then maybe after our H1, we want to say, let's have a, uh, a, a heading two. And within our heading two, we're gonna have um, a bunch of droids. So we'll do some droids here. And then maybe to describe our droids, we will have an unordered list. So our unordered list uh, element would be a less than symbol, UL for unordered, unordered list, and then the greater than symbol to, to close our opening tag. And then within our unordered list, we need list items. So those are going to be LI elements. Um, VS Code will automatically close elements, but I'll go ahead and delete some of these close tags just to show you that it, it really doesn't matter. So we could have uh, C3PO as a droid, and we could have R2D2 as a droid, and then got to add BB-8 as a droid, and um, I don't really know how to do DO. I think is it just DO? We'll guess. And that's probably a good place to stop. So we've got four elements inside of an unordered list for some uh, droids here. We can save this. And then if I switch over to a web browser, which is looking at this web page um, before all of our changes were saved, but if I just hit the reload button or uh, command or control R on your browser, you can see, hey, now we've got a long time ago, got a lot bigger because it is an H1 element now. Similarly, we've got droid on there as an H2 element. And then we've got four items in an unordered list, which the browser will render with just a, a very simple bulleted list. And if we wanted to change this around a little bit, maybe that droid is a little bit too big and we think, well, maybe this is really more of an H3 element instead of an H2 element. We could come back to our HTML text change uh, h2 to h3 in both the open and closing tags and then let's also go ahead and delete a couple of our closing list item tags so i'm going to take the list item closing tag off of r2d2 and bb8 we'll save this and look at this in our browser hit reload and droid got a little smaller to sort of emphasize hey this is a a heading three now, not a heading two, but nothing happened in our unordered list. We still have four items with bullets uh, in front of them for our droids. And that's just demonstrating that um, those closing LI tags are not required in, in this context. So that's about all I really wanted to, to sort of go over today. Um, I just wanted to, to show you a couple more HTML elements and get a little bit more familiar and, and sort of uh, used to uh, editing some HTML in our code window and flipping over to the browser and refreshing and seeing the changes made in real time. That's sort of the, that tight development loop that we always are striving for um, anywhere we can. So I want to you know, be able to see the changes that I'm making in code as rapidly as I can. And uh, that is one of the really fun things about web development in general is that that tight development loop is almost always possible. Um, as we get further into web development, that loop gets a little bit longer, but uh, it's always usually measured in seconds and not minutes or, or something like that. So um, it's a, a very uh, immediately satisfying um, uh, area to play in technology. So I think that's a great place to stop for today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and we will talk with you next time.